Chapter 10 Gold Everywhere When the stone door was opened, what lay beyond was a path full of rocks and pebbles. At the end was another door. Howard Carter knocked a hole in it. When he looked through, he held up a flickering candle in the darkness. What did he see? Here is how he described the day of days, the most wonderful I have ever lived through. At first I could see nothing, but presently, as my eyes grew accustomed to the light, details of the room within emerged slowly from the mist. Strange animals, statues, and gold. Everywhere the glint of gold. I was struck dumb with amazement. Lord Carnarvon was there with his daughter. So was a friend of Carter's. They were all in the dark corridor. Lord Carnarvon called to Howard Carter. Can you see anything? Howard Carter said, Yes, wonderful things. Howard Carter's dream had come true. He had found exactly what he was looking for, the tomb of King Tut. What were some of the wonderful things he first saw? There were two overturned chariots, a throne, three big couches whose sides were carved in the shape of beasts, a bed with a linen mattress. There were life-size statues of kings. Things were piled every which way, vases and staffs of different shapes and sizes. One box was for the king's saving equipment. Other boxes contained meat for Tut to eat. And to the right of the jumble of the treasure, Howard Carter saw another door. What did that mean? There were more rooms. There was more treasure. This first room was the antechamber. The following day, Carter and Carnarvon and Carnarvon's daughter returned. They came with electric lamps this time. They wanted to get a better look around. There was a hole in one wall. Peering through it, Carter could see into another room. It became known as the Annex. There was far more stuff in the Annex than in the antechamber. Smaller things like vases and game boards. And everything had been thrown about, all over the floor. Howard Carter realized that long ago, robbers had definitely found their way in. But there was no way to tell what had been taken. All told, there were four rooms in the tomb. This is how they were laid out. Another small room was called the treasury. Among the things inside was the chest that contained jars with Tut's internal organs and the two small coffins with baby mummies. The most important room of all was the burial chamber. This was where Tut's mummy had been placed but no one knew if the robbers had broken into the burial chamber too. Chapter 11 Meeting the King King Tut was lucky. Until Howard Carter entered his burial chamber, his mummy had never been disturbed. For more than 3,000 years, no one had laid eyes on it. In the burial chamber, the first thing Carter saw was a gigantic gold cabinet. Inside of that was a great stone box, and inside of that was the outer mummy case. All three beautiful mummy cases fit together very tightly. The innermost one was solid gold, more than 200 pounds of it. When Howard Carter raised its lid, there it was, the cloth-covered mummy of the king. Carter took off the gold mask placed over it. He described it as one of the most beautiful pieces of artwork he had ever seen. Then he carefully peeled away strips of cloth. At last came the most thrilling moment of all. He was face to face with Tut. The pharaoh's face still looked young and calm and peaceful. Nearby was a chest made of white stone called alabaster. Inside were the jars holding the organs of the pharaoh, the ones the priests had removed from his body so long ago. Each jar had a stopper with a head of a god on it. The treasures of Tut's tombs were sent to a museum in Cairo, Egypt, but Howard Carter did not send the king's mummy there. It stayed in the royal's chamber, 
right where it belonged. That is where it belongs now. In peace. Chapter 12. The Legend Lives On. Right after, Carter, right after Howard Carter's discovery of the tomb, scary stories started to be told. Stories about curses. Over the entrances of many ancient Egyptian tombs were warnings in hieroglyphs. People better stay away, the warning said, because anybody who dared enter would pay for it. Lord Carnarvon died only a few months after Tut's tomb was opened. A bad insect bite was the likely cause of his death, but many people were sure it was because of a curse. Tut was getting revenge, but if that were so, wouldn't Tut be angrier at Howard Carter? Yet Howard Carter lived until 1939 and died from natural causes. For some people, stories of a curse add to the mystery of ancient Egypt. They like being scared. That's why horror movies about mummies are so popular. Ancient Egypt was very difficult from our world. But it was a peaceful world. It was a world of great beauty. The people of ancient Egypt loved life so much they hoped it would go on forever. If people are lucky enough to see King Tut's precious belongings, that is what they should remember. All right, in closing, ancient Egypt's long history. Historians divide ancient Egypt and the rule of the pharaohs into time periods called kingdoms. The Old Kingdom, which started in 2575 BC, that's more than 4,500 years ago, lasted about 400 years. The Middle Kingdom began in 1975 BC and continued for more than 300 years. The New Kingdom dated from 1539 B.C. to 1075 B.C. King Tut ruled during the New Kingdom. Between these major periods were times when Egypt was not an organized empire ruled by one pharaoh. Historians call these intermediate periods. Within the kingdoms and intermediate periods are dynasties. Dynasties identify when a certain family was in power. There were usually many kings in one dynasty. During the New Kingdom, King Tut was the twelfth king of the 18th dynasty. During the late period, 715 to 332 BC, Egypt came under the rule of many different countries and lost much of its power. The late period was followed by the Greco-Roman period, 332 B.C. to 395 A.D., and finally, in 30 B.C., Egypt became a province of the Roman Empire. An Egyptian would not be king again until more than 1,500 years later, in the 19th century A.D.